Oh no no yeah for now yeah uh once it once you're ready to uh put it out there then that's that's perfect but um yeah I've been kind of um so I as I mentioned to you I I had already uh kind of did a one year stake with Hex and um let me just start off by just saying my name's Lawrence and uh I go under the uh, pen name of Law Law Sue. So I have written a few articles about Hex. And um, when I did my one year stake, I left mostly because uh, the Ethereum gas fees. And then also uh, because I just started seeing things that were going on with, with Hex that just didn't feel right for me they didn't make me feel confident in uh continuing to invest with hex um i wasn't confident from the very beginning i mean from the get-go i had recognized uh richard hart uh while he was doing his hex launch and um i was just like there was all this scam talk surrounding him and uh, I was not like I had already seen the BitConnect situation, and my thought has always been: whenever there's scam talk around anything, any coin, whatever, uh, it's time to be cautious. So I I decided to go into it cautiously, and uh, when I did go into it, I only went in with the money that I felt like I could be willing to lose you know and made me just completely forget about it I didn't even think about it at all until the the year uh ended and it came time for me to uh take out what I had uh put in and I was like oh wow yeah this turned out pretty well (laughs) it was it was actually pretty awesome um and then I as I was trying to pull my money out it was like the Ethereum gas fees were, that hit hard. Like, I, I think I, I had a $159 uh, gas fee for a $1,000 uh, uh, in stake. And um, at that point I was like, it didn't cost me that much to start this up. So I, I'm losing money by being, just putting my money into this. Um, even though what I put in, I made like several times more, but, um, I figured that this wasn't going to stop. I figured that, uh, with Ethereum right now, uh, and the, the, the bear or the bull market coming, I was like, this probably isn't going to stop. Let me hold off from restaking and just watch the hex community, watch the hex smart contract, see what happens. And um, over those next few months, it was just like, I, I, the more I saw, the more I was like, I, I, I'm not feeling this. And this is just me, you know, like it, it's, it's my personal opinion. And um, a lot of people like to call Hex a scam, call Hex a Ponzi scheme, yada, yada, yada. Um, I'm not, I'm not uh, that guy that will go and say that all the time. Cause I mean, based on definition of scam and uh, Ponzi scheme, it's, it's, it's hard to prove something like that, you know, you, it, cause it's, it's subjective, you know? So for me, my thoughts is, is, is it sustainable? Am I willing to stay in and nothing will make me want to leave? And that wasn't the case for Hex. Uh, I mentioned that in my second article I kind of went off the analogy of uh, playing poker and uh, saying that Hex was my seven deuce off suit. And everybody got pissed about that. And I'm like, (laughs) you know, first there were people who were like seven deuce and they got mad because I said seven deuce. And I'm like, I love seven deuce. I don't know what y'all talking about. (laughs) Like, I really love seven deuce. When I see it come my way, I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, it's time to play. It's time to play, (laughs) you know? Cause I look at, it's it's the underdog. You know what I'm saying? 
And uh, that's why I was interested in even putting any money into Hex in the first place. It's an underdog. And um, it was the, the thing that changed my mind the most was the community. And that's what I can say for that. Uh, and, and Richard Hart. Um, where I would go with saying it leans more towards the scam <laughs> uh, concept or the Ponzi scheme concept is where everybody has this weird, uh, you know, um, it's, it's these psychological arguments that they try and use, like, uh, you know, the 10,000 X, you know, and it, like the best, uh, the best uh, crypto ever. You know, the last two years, it's, it's, it's done better than any other, it's performed better than any other asset. And that's not true. It's just simply not true. And um, it, it, it makes me feel like they're trying so hard to get more people in. And I'm like, I don't like that. If, if, if there's a bear market and people start saying like it's already a bunch of scam talk around it the whole crypto community doesn't want any part of it and then there's uh this it, it, the possibility of a bear market on on approach and i'm like is that sustainable through all of that now currently right now the price is going up i think it's at 22 cent right now it's going back up and uh I recently wrote an article where uh, I said that uh, it, by the 10th, I think, and today's the 11th, but I, I said by the 10th, I believe that everything was just getting ready to fall apart. Um, but that wasn't true. I was wrong about that. And actually, I want to uh, make sure that I say that here. Uh, I was wrong about that. And uh, Hex kind of sustained itself through that period of time. It's sustained itself through all the FUD and everything, which is kind of a phenomenon to me. And the reason why I have chosen to write about Hex is because of the fact that it's just, it's weird. It's a lot of weird stuff going on with it. And um, I think it should be okay for me to say, I don't, I just don't want to invest in it, uh, but I can, uh, express my opinions as well. Um, and what bothers me the most is how people attack you if you have an opinion that's that may be negative about it. And I have negative opinions about even the uh, cryptocurrencies and uh, crypto assets that I love. You know, um, it's just that with Hex, it's a little different, mainly just because it's a smaller community. And uh, there's a lot of really weird stuff going on in that community. Like uh, Richard Hart, his tokenomics is really strange. Um, and as you can see with Nomics, they pulled uh, Hex down. Um, that was that was that was just today, right? Yeah, uh, yesterday I think, or the day before maybe. But um, they actually adjusted it again. They they adjusted it twice. So. Um, that kind of stuff right there, it's just, it's a lot for me, you know, I, it's not enough for me to just be like, I, I feel like I can hold on to this for a long period of time. Was he, was Hicks the first crypto that you got yourself involved in or? No, not at all. <laughs> not even so, close. So you, you, you knew the, you understood the landscape a little bit before you got involved. You're not a complete like newbie in there no. like a lot of the um, a lot of the people i've interviewed with the hexagons and stuff you know a lot of new like this is their first entry point so yeah, they so can be they can be forgiven a little it, yeah in a way um well see this is my thing like um i'm all about decentralization I don't care what, what community you're from. I don't care what coin you, you support or what project, what product you support as far as cryptocurrencies and crypto assets goes. My thing is, is um, I'm, not a, I, I'm not a fan of gatekeeping. And that's something that has been happening with Hex, um, but it's something that's been happening with the whole crypto community. Um, 
which is something that I can relate to when it comes to hexagons. They, they, they are really upset about, um, they feel like they've been, you know, oppressed in a way as, as a crypto community. Um, and I, I can relate to that, but uh, you can choose to react a certain way, you know? And uh, I don't like, okay, so a little background on me. Um, I'm a web developer and uh, my interest in cryptocurrency came from uh, hearing, uh, or I saw a TED talk from Bettina War Warburg. And um, my first time hearing about Bitcoin was in 2013. I, I was watching uh, Chris Perillo um, and he mentioned it. And I thought that it was like video game money or something like that back in 2013. But it wasn't until 2016, December 2016, it was just after my uh, daughter was born. And uh, I saw this TED talk from Bettina Warburg and she was talking about uh, how blockchain could uh, revolutionize our economy. And I was like, oh, wait, and she mentioned Bitcoin. And I was like, this is what this is about. And it's like, it's programmable money. And you know, you, you can, um, you know, track a lot of different things with it and have ownership from, uh, you know, like whatever it is, as long as you can have a dig digital on ownership of it, you can kind of uh, circumvent these middlemen and um, provide even uh, an even better uh, method of transaction. So, uh, or, or exchange of value. And so that to me was like, Yes, I'm, I feel like this is awesome because, uh, you know, I, I personally believe that the, 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 the big issue that we have around the world is wealth not being shared and the playing field not being even. Now, about Hex, I came around to Hex and was like, well, I think that Hex has an interesting idea um but i had just seen what ha had happened with you know the likes of uh these schemes like bitconnect and uh eth connect and whatever else was out there the ico uh um uh craze of 2017 and uh i noticed that it, it we are in the wild west so um everything is kind of experimental right now. So I figured that it's time to allow people to kind of experiment and do as they please um, for now. Um, as long as this, as long as nobody's getting hurt, right? Well, that's the and... thing, that's the thing is, you know, a lot of these projects in this economy, this crypto economy, they, you know, it's it's not so easy to find the victims because they often don't want to don't want to talk about it, right? Nobody wants right. to talk about it. Same in the regular Ponzi, eco you know, economy. People don't they they feel ashamed, so they're not going to talk about it. But I, you know, I tend to agree with you on, on a number of points there, but I, I want to bring it back round on point here. And I want you to talk, a, you've talked a little bit about how the community acts, but what about Richard? So in my previous interviews with the Hexicons, they often, you know, I asked them, how do you, you know, take me back to that day that you heard about Hex in they 99% of the time they, they talk, they say, oh, I saw Richard. Richard seems to be this sort of onboarding, this this magnet. So I, I started to understand or like comprehend that Hex and Richard are not the same. You know, they're not the same thing as much right. as he as much as he might like them to be. It seems like they both have separate functions, right? Hex is a smart mm -hmm. contract on the Ethereum blockchain. Richard is a human being doing some sort of marketing exercise so talk to me talk to me a little bit about when you first heard about richard then versus now 
Yeah, so I had come across Richard uh, outside of crypto, but um, I didn't recognize that I knew who he was once I saw him in crypto until after I, like somebody had shown me his old videos because he had the long hair and everything. But I had seen him on stage doing a talk about, uh, I think this was just before his launch for Hex. I didn't get in uh, on day one. I didn't get into Hex until two months later. But um, I had seen this uh, talk that he did and he was talking about Bitcoin and how uh, nobody talks about the things that go wrong with Bitcoin. Nobody wants to talk about that. And I, at this point, I was so pissed about Bitcoin because I hated Bitcoin at this point. Um, and like, it seemed like everybody was all about Bitcoin. And so I liked what he had to say. Now, uh, then he got onto a, uh, into a conversation with, uh, he was on a, uh, in a video with Naomi Brockwell, who I uh, was a follower of. And Naomi, she didn't allow him to really tell his story. Um, she had this guy on that was a developer for, for Richard. And uh, the guy didn't really like what, what had happened at, with the hex contract, smart contract. And so that right there, so me as a developer, I'm like, okay, I'm listening to that guy, but I'm also listening to Richard because I'm not a, the kind of guy that takes information and I'm like, oh, I'm just, because I like that guy, I'm gonna go with him. Or I like that guy, I'm gonna go with him. I just take in information. I'm like, okay, what's factual, what's not? Uh, let me base my decisions on uh, just the facts mostly. And when Naomi didn't allow him to really speak and they got into this conversation about, you know, like uh, who has more followers or whatever. And it just got really petty and childish to me. And so that kind of pushed me a little bit more towards him. Now, the issue came when I started seeing his lives, uh, his live broadcasts. And um, I wasn't really worried because I had already put my money into Hex and I wasn't really worried about what was going to happen with my money or nothing like that. I, I didn't care. Um, but I started seeing these lives and he was arguing with all these other people in crypto. And it, like the, the, the narrative became, I'm going to shut these guys down. And I'm like, that's not productive. <laughs> like, how do how can we be productive and uh, you know help people and uh, build new things with that kind of stuff? And it was contradictory of what he had been saying in the beginning. I want to help people. I want to build something that actually helps people around the world. But then at the same time, he's saying this stuff that's like, you know, people don't really care about the technology. They care about making money. And in some ways that's true, but like the thing is, is that if you understand what wealth actually is, then you understand that wealth is in helping people. And, you know, build, like you're not gonna get it overnight just because you put your money into some asset and then suddenly it goes up, you know? <laughs> you put it into something that you believe in and you contribute to that. And you're, 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 you're focused on, uh, you know, building and collaborating with other people. That's not what I saw with Hex. What I saw was attacking. And um, while there were a lot of people calling it a scam and saying that he's a scam artist, I figured that at the same time, even though I get where he's coming from and how he uh, feels attacked possibly, but he has a choice he can choose to react a certain kind of way. So without, you know, all the, uh, the, the anger and the hostility and the condescension, you know, uh, it's something about that that just doesn't sit well with me. Um, so this is a little bit more so not in the scam realm. It's, it's not a part of that. And you know, I think 
that's what a lot of uh, people in, in the Hex community misunderstand for me. Yeah, I mean, uh, often the often the uh, critics, you know, they they call him a narcissist and and everything. They, um, and you know, some of that kind, some of those traits come across in some of his streams, and especially some of the more recent stuff where he's like got Gucci handbags and what have you, like. I started talking to Rich, like I interviewed Richard over a year ago for a previous pro, uh, film, uh, documentary film project, and you know he came across very pleasant. But uh, as soon as like I started this investigation into into Richard, I, you know, obviously I consumed a hell of a lot of his material, and then recently, I think in the last month or so, suddenly he's flipped and started talking about. Um, expensive luggage and yeah. uh, Gucci uh, handbags or what what have you like wearing very very expensive clothes and watches and stuff and I saw a tweet from him and he said you know shut up guys fuck off guys I'm I'm uh, I'm doing this so we can attract a new uh, a new audience yeah. you know mm. and yeah. I, for me that felt very disingenuous Mm-hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. you've seen him back there. You you know you've witnessed what he was like back then and what he's like now. To, you know what what's that evolution look like to you? Um, it's I, it's it's hard to say because I I'm not even certain if it's an evolution. It, everybody has a little bit of narcissism, just a little bit. And it's on different levels. I, I know I have some myself, um, but I think some people lean more into it depending on where they're at in their life. Well, yeah, and, and, it, and it can get encouraged. You know, right. if you build if you build such a community, right? So he's. I feel like he built this community, and over time. When, when you have so many people like, oh yeah, you're, you're so great. I love everything that you do. You're a God, basically. Uh, the humility tends to <laughs> go away and the uh, narcissism tends to stick its head out a little bit more. Now, um, to, to say that Richard is irredeemable I don't believe that, but uh, I do believe that he his behavior tends to influence his his uh, community, and his community feeds him. So it's a cycle going on, and now they've all become this toxic mess where it's like they're out uh, trying to relentlessly promote this this coin token and um they're getting reject they're getting rejected and with that rejection there's this anger that comes along with it and then it turns in like it, it, sometimes it starts out with condescension and then it turns into anger and then it turns into hostility and sometimes even like uh uh, verbal violence. And uh, I, I, I have to say this, because uh, over the time where I was writing these articles, and I'm most my biggest thing was how the community behaves in all in each article, like, I'm trying to really focus in on that. But what I started receiving on the other end, uh, it, it, there, there were points where there would be people coming to me with, uh, um, you know, racial slurs, all kinds of stuff, it, things that didn't have anything to do with cryptocurrency or, uh, you know, um, crypto assets or investing. It's, it became ad hominem, all of that. And then uh, not only that, 
I think on my second article that I wrote, I, I shared it with everybody in the community, just kind of saying it, cause it was the, uh, Hex is my seven deuce off suit. And then Richard didn't even read the article. It was literally two seconds after I made the post, he comes in, uh, responds just two seconds later with a video, uh, about how gambling is, you know, for stupid people or something like that. It was just a little short video talking about how gambling is for stupid people. Now, my whole thing was, is I don't, my, my analogy wasn't about gambling. Um, well, in a way it was because it, it was just like using that to say, okay, this is, we're all gambling here with crypto, period. We're all gambling. But the, the thing is, is that you have to understand it's not about, oh, do I have the best asset? <laughs> you know, it's about what is this asset doing right now in this moment? with all these people here right now, being present in this moment. And um, is it, it, like, I'm not focused on the gambling aspect, I'm focused on the presence aspect of it. And in the present at that time, when I wrote that article, it looked like everybody is, you know, like euphoric right now, because at that time, I think they had just reached the all time high of 48 cents. And yeah, that's great. Everything's euphoric. But then on, on like what they weren't recognizing was the toxicity that was making them unattractive. Because what I was seeing, because I, I tend to go through the whole community and read everything. And uh, I'll, I'll start using different keywords and everything just like hex and whatever and start reading. And I don't say nothing to everybody. I just read. And what I started seeing was like a lot of people desperately posting to get more people in with no responses. And uh, I think what I started hearing mostly was a lot of people who were coming in were like friends and family of other people, yada, yada. And uh, then more money was coming in because people were taking out loans and stuff. And I was like, this sounds crazy. Like, this is, they're breaking all my rules <laughs> as far as like investing goes. I don't follow those kinds of rules. I don't put any more than I'm willing uh, to lose in, period. But there's a bunch of people doing this, which means that there's going to be a ton of fear surrounding this, this token. And so um, once it starts going down, there's a ton of fear that's going to be just brewing. And what I saw was people starting to attack each other once the coin started going down. <laughs> I mean, it was a lot of infighting. There was a lot of attacking other people outside the communities. Um, and of course, you had a lot of people uh, laughing at hexagons because it was just like, you know, you're in a Ponzi, ha, 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 you know? But these are people's lives we're talking about, so. Now, I will, yeah, I mean, we could go on and on about the online communities in crypto, but I, you, at, at the beginning when we started, you mentioned that you were all about decentralization. Well, that was one of the major attractions or value propositions for crypto for you. And I'm, um, you know, I call myself a crypto scamdemic investigator, but what I've realized, especially in the last few months, with this project, I've, you know, I've really, really zoomed in and I've realized like the, the key, I think the key to, to defining whether or not a crypto project is a scam or not is the level of decentralization. Like people talk about decentralization as a spectrum. Now, before, before this investigation, I used to think of it as, you know, it's either decentralized or it's centralized. It's black and white. Now that a lot of a lot of the interviews that I've gone through with you know web developers like yourself, they they talk about this spectrum. Mm -hmm. So in the DeFi, DeFi, DeFi decentralized finance applications, you could, I guess you could call Hex a DeFi applica application or something. They do. Where where on the spectrum of decentralization? You know, talk to me a bit more broadly about that because I'm trying to position it on that spectrum oh, you about to make hexagons mad at me wow okay so uh 
that's one of the major things about uh, Hex that makes me just say, eh, I'm gonna I'm stay back. Um, because I don't mind centralization. I understand the necessity for it in some cases. Um, but what I do hope for is to take that centralization, use it to build something and then give it to the people, make it decentralized. Now, what I see with Hex is a centralized product, uh, a very centralized product. And uh, the community ha have become maximalist and uh, don't really, like they, they believe that it's the most decentralized asset out there, but it is not. <laughs> it's the complete opposite of that. Um, I would say that it's like way on the end where it's like uh, centralized, but it could be decentralized. If Richard was willing to allow the community to have it, what I figure the issue is, is that Richard doesn't trust his own community. And to create a, a valuable asset, trust is the most valuable uh, characteristic. And he's not trusting his community and his community puts far too much trust in him almost blindly in a way so you, and nobody outside trusts him at all no of course uh, are you reference so are you uh, just trying to read between the lines are you referencing the oa the origin address because oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. the the the, the oh, yeah. origin I, I got two I got two I got two key pieces of information that I've picked up and that is one the OA owns 95% of circular uh, su supply and two it's actually 12 people not one it's not Richard it's it's a it's a, a, a group yeah and we don't know who they are um well, actually I think I've identified at least two of them so I think I think by the end of my investigation I should be able to identify all twelve. Whether they whether whether I get put in an early grave before that or not, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, sounds like you've been doing some amazing investigating. But um, actually, I, I I'm I'm uh, gonna have to say because I I feel like uh, based on what I've seen because I've been observing you uh, on Twitter as well. Uh, it seems like you've been, you know, just staying very uh, neutral and just watching, which is interesting. Uh, at first, I was skeptical, but um, yeah, when it comes to investigative, uh, um, you know, uh, investigative reporting, I feel like it, it's always best to just kind of stay neutral, sit back, pay attention to what's going on. Uh, observe the facts. And I've seen you do that, uh, which is why I chose to go on ahead and do this. Now, um, as far as the OA goes, video, though, right? what's that? I assume you saw my staking video. Uh, I've seen, uh, uh, I've seen, tweets where you've been mentioning about your your uh I your stake i started a stake at the beginning of my investigation because i wanted to yeah, be i, I wanted to be subject started. subject to the whole ex the ex you know the four-dimensional yeah. experience if you like so right right and i figured that was part of it so at at one point i wasn't entirely certain um if you were just the hexagon that was creating the documentary or if you were just somebody who was kind of outside, decided to come in and observe, um, which is kind of what I've always been myself. Um, even in the very beginning, I didn't go and tell everybody I got hex. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't tell nobody. Um, I, I never. I, I actually. I never mentioned uh, that I held hex to anybody the whole time that I held. 
Um, and I wanted to see if I could still uh, have a successful investment without saying a word. Now, even though I did, <laughs> what I started to see afterwards was people doing the exact opposite. Um, and one thing that I, 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 I want to kind of mention, because I do hope that people in the Hex community see this, I believe that if your, uh, if your project, product, asset, whatever you want to call it, uh, if it does what it really says it does, if you believe in it that much, why the hostile defense? Why is it so necessary to attack people who call it a scam? If it's not a scam, let it do what it does. Nothing to worry about. The code speaks for itself. The community speaks for themselves. Matter of fact, just based on what I've seen in these past three months so far, the hexagon community is extremely toxic and um, almost uh, like kind of uh, masochistic <laughs> in a way, but because uh, <laughs> they really liked that whole dick part. Like it was weird. Um, and seeing a lot of people who were really scared uh, that they were losing everything. Um, it, that was interesting. It sounds like we've, we've got some sort of uh, trifecta. We've got the community, we've got Richard, and then we've got the smart contract, right? Yeah. Th those are the three elements. Or well, I guess we have the OA or the this sort of anonymous group of yeah. Although actually, I've thought yeah, they're, they're they're anonymous. They're not. They're pseudo anonymous. I should say. Yeah, and actually, recently I've been thinking a little bit about like, is Richard, is the function of Richard as a deflection from this group or whatever of you know he often he's you know there's a few interviews where he's been put on the put on the spot about the OA and he's deflected successfully but I, I wonder what is the what is you know what is the function of Richard what is his because he he appears to be a kind of king amongst his people that's yeah. invented this wonderful money printing machine. But he seems to also, his main function seems to be absorbing all of the, the shit from the other, from the, from the, from the wider community, you know. In, yeah. In, um, he, he, in my opinion, he's the, he's the marketing tool. Uh, so what what other equivalents like because obviously often there's a there's an equivalent drawn between him and Satoshi, and what a, what a hexagon will say and what they what many of them will say well look, why would you trust an anonymous Satoshi figure over this you know Richard, who stands by his product like a typical C, uh, you know a traditional CEO, the, a founder, I, I and but then he will say I'm not a founder. <laughs> Yeah, I, well, I think it depends on what you value. To the people in the Bitcoin community, an anonymous founder is valuable for them. Whereas in, to the people in the Hex community, Richard is valuable to them. Exactly. They call, they call him a leader, but he says, I'm more of a cheerleader. Yeah, and that's part of that weird stuff that's going on. Um, Cause he, he, he does this stuff. He's very, he, he's smooth and slippery, you know, smooth talker. Um, like my mother used to say all the time, like he's, he's one of those smooth talkers. And when you get in front of a smooth talker, you need to put your guard up, you know? Um, has, and that's that's the vibe that I get from him. He has got uh, an air of confidence about him. Yeah, 
which is a good thing in so, in some ways, but uh, he's just he's slippery. <laughs> he's one <laughs> he's one of those like uh, I remember I was talking with uh, uh, one of the people in the hex community, and uh, I mentioned to him uh, that he reminds me of Donald Trump, the way he talks. And he was like, I love Donald Trump. So that's why I love Richard. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's, 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 I must've hit, hit the nail right on the head there. But, um, and not to say that there's anything bad about Trump, like in how he talks or anything. It's just Donald Trump knows how you sell some shit. <laughs> he can use controversy to sell some shit. <laughs> and, and I admire that in so many ways. Uh, and so with Richard, there's, there's a little bit of this uh, battle going on with me. Like, I, I like the dude in some ways, but then in some others, I'm like, dude, like, can you, <laughs> can you get it together, man, please? Because uh, you, you, you dive into that controversy. Um, and that's the double-edged sword of that shit. You know, like, uh, as we can see with Donald Trump, you know, um, that didn't uh, really go so well for him, uh, you know, really leaning into that controversy. Uh, I think it's a question of a question of time. It's not necessarily if, but when. And so far, you know, I think Hex has been going for about two years now. Um, mm -hmm. And... I haven't found any vi victims. I've found, you know, no. of scams. I've found some disgruntled investors, but there's plenty of those in crypto, so that's nothing new. Yeah. Um, no. But let me let me let me pause you real quick because a lot of people call BitConnect a Ponzi scheme and a scam, and there's a big misunderstanding about that as well. There were several incidents that happened that led to the downfall of Bit BitConnect. Now, there was the DDoS attack, uh, the hacks, and then there was the shutdown of the, uh, the exchange, which wasn't necessarily meaning that, oh, uh, we're going to rug pull. They just shut down the exchange and everyone panicked and they started selling, trying to look for places to sell. So that's what actually happened with BitConnect. And everybody kind of just was like, see, I saw, I, I, I knew it was a scam. I knew it was a Ponzi scheme where had none of those incidents happened. And I think uh, also the SEC started uh, sending cease and desist letters out to different states. So th there was kind of this uh, domino effect that happened that just made it worse for BitConnect to continue to thrive. Um, now, uh, my thought is the same thing could possibly happen with Hex. And I don't think that it, there's this invincibility type of uh, thing that the whole community has. That, like, we're the best, we can get through anything. And I'm like, any one of these cryptos, no matter who you are, what group it is, whatever, you're, you're vulnerable, just as vulnerable as any other. Like. We got Binance who gets hacked all the time. The reason why Binance survives it is because there's there's a financial backing behind it. Whereas, if that were to happen with Hex, we might have a problem, <laughs> a major problem. So just to be clear, then BitConnect was actually a victim of market sentiment. Yeah, um, this house of cards fell. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't. It was not instigated by a central. We or we don't know if there was some sort of a catalyst from the founding group. But anyway, regardless, we're not talking about BitConnect. We're just, right, right. We're I'm, I'm just using that. that as a way to kind of let people know. Like a lot of people call want to call Hex a scam. They want to look for the uh, the people who have been scammed. No one was scammed. <laughs> no one was scammed with BitConnect. At least um, you may find some people who would say they were um, after the fact. Exactly. And I think this is why Richard's so careful to not associate himself with the uh, origin address because 
um, if or when some sort of the bottom, you know, the bottom falls out of it or whatever you want to call it, he doesn't want to be the guy that was the the founding member or the leader or whatever. That it's better that that, mm-hmm. that entity or those in those individuals stay anonymous because then it can just mm-hmm. go to bed and we can charge up another one. Yeah, because he knows good and well that if this falls apart, they come in for him. <laughs> and regardless of all his little words, the, the way he uses his words and everything, they're they going to still come for him. <laughs> regardless. If this falls apart, they're coming for him. So and <laughs> what, <laughs> you can do whatever you want. <laughs> but uh, perception can be irrational in many uh, circumstances. So. Yeah, no, it's it's going to be an interesting few years, especially well. Uh, you've you've you're obviously aware of Pulse Chain launching mm-hmm. uh, sometime yeah. at the end of the been following it like a hawk. <laughs> yeah, because people are suggesting that he's going to do hex on repeat, basically. So, what do you reckon? Uh, see. <sighs> okay, Pulse Chain could be the savior of hex. Uh, mainly because I thought that Hex was a bad model in the first place. Um, and, and I thought that he shouldn't even put it on Ethereum from the very beginning. I was, he always would say that it's a better asset than Ethereum. I'm like, why did you use Ethereum then? <laughs> why did you put it on the Ethereum blockchain? You had any, first off, you could choose to put your smart co- contract, not only on Ethereum, you could put it on Neo, you could put it on Cardano, you could put it on uh, Solana, you could put, I mean, there's all these new smart contract blockchains that are coming forth that he could just put his smart contract on and everybody can use it. Binance smart chain, he could do that too. Is it, that's to me is decentralization. That to me is where he's, thinking to himself, I'm going to collaborate with everybody instead of talking about how shitty every blockchain is, you know? Yeah, because um, from what I understand, the Pulse Chain will be launched. Well, Pulse Chain is a some sort of fork of Binance uh, Smart Chain. Go Ethereum. It's a fork of uh, Binance Smart Chain and a fork of Ethereum. Binance is a uh, Smart Chain is a fork of Ethereum where... Uh, basically, they're just taking everything that Binance did and redoing it now again. And and it's going to have a snap a snapshot of all the DEPs and all the smart contracts from those chains previous as well, right? Um, that's what I've understood, and and you've probably seen they have a lot of scorn for Eric Wall, the Swedish um, yeah. guy. Like yeah. he ended up in their 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 music video recently, yeah. and, you know, up he on the on his grave. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I think it was him. He was in a he was. A, I, I I listened to a four hour podcast with him and one of the developers. I think called Kyle, and they they talked about this idea that okay, there's going to be a snapshot where all these DEPs and smart contracts are going to exist on Pulse, but there's nobody going to be developing. You know, it's going to be a ghost town. And that's going to cause a lot of that's like, not true. No? that's not true. Um, see, this is the thing. And this, and, um, a lot of people in the hex community already know that I'm kind of a fan of Cardano. Um, but this is the, the same issue that I have with Charles Hoskinson, uh, the gatekeeping, the, the idea of, oh, because it's not, uh, I don't believe it's sustainable. It's not a sustainable model in my mind. I think that it won't work and it shouldn't be in crypto. It's going to hurt the whole crypto community. Where I'm like, this is all experimentation anyway from day one. And uh, if we're, if we're um, trying to make it seem like cryptocurrency is the people getting their voice back again, why are we trying to silence people? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, that's what I believe is happening with Hex and Pulse Chain. Um, and I think that uh, there's a place for uh, assets like that. Like even with SHIB, 
and uh, Dogecoin. Like um, I've I've heard you know Charles say things like you know Dogecoin shouldn't like I, we we hated it when it kept coming up and you know uh, rising in price and everybody would be talking about it again and again and again and it just never dies. And I'm like, why would you want it to die? That like in the last year of I I've, I've had more people come to me asking about cryptocurrency and particularly Doge than I ever had since I've been involved in crypto. I would be sitting here talking about all the cryptos I like and here they come with Doge and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to accept this cuz we're going to have this conversation about cryptocurrency, not particularly one that I'm a huge fan of. One that I kind of have regretted not purchasing in the past, but um at the same time it it brought people here and now we can have this conversation about decentralization. And uh, that's what I think the value in Hex and Pulse Chain is. That's what I think uh, Pulse Chain can be. Um, the 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 uh, the ecosystem that onboards a lot of people that aren't into all this technology and stuff. What they want to know is what can this thing do for me? And what people hear is ten thousand x people getting rich overnight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what they hear. And that's attractive to them. Um, now, some of these people are getting wrecked. Real talk. Like, just over the past two, three months, I'm sure a lot of people have lost a lot <laughs> and got straight wrecked. But um, in, with Hex. But um, I think the thing is that we have to understand is that uh, that's crypto. That's how it all works in crypto. But um, I think my major issue with people in the Hex community is that it is how they behave when that happens. All the infighting, all the hostility, you know, uh, condescension and everything, talking about how, uh, you know, all these other coins are shit coins and everything. I'm like, we all are actually trying to make cryptocurrency and decentralization you know, become mainstream, but we can't even get along. <laughs> we can't even work together. You know, we're fighting each other all the time. And that's my issue. So I think that um, once Hex can change its uh, direction as far as the, the toxicity goes, um, I think it can actually grow even more. Uh, Pulse Chain could grow a lot just based on being collaborative. Like I see all these people mad and upset because there's going to be people outside of the quote unquote hex community building on Pulse. And I'm like, that's awesome. Like, welcome it. Make bridges. Don't burn them down. You know, because if you keep burning down your bridges, you're going to be on an island. And when the hurricane comes, what you going to do? <laughs> You know, what you going to do? <laughs> Where are you going to go? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then you're stuck, you know? And um, it could all fall apart, just like BitConnect. It could all fall apart. And people want to consider BitConnect a scam and everything. But in my personal opinion, I think uh, BitConnect shot itself in the foot. All of that uh, hostility, all that condescension, all of that, you know, it made hackers want to attack them and target them because as you could see, like people like Trevon, who is also a promoter of Hex, um, he got all his Bitcoin taken online, live online. <laughs> Same thing with uh, 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 Crypto Nick and all of them. They were targets. Then the DDoS attack, they became a target. That's the thing, like don't make yourself a target. And I, I, I'm uh, uh, big on cybersecurity. That's one of my biggest things. That I find value in security. And I don't see as much with, uh, with Hex. Uh, they praise their code. They praise uh, the fact that Pulse Chain is coming and everything. But I don't see many developers there. And when I see a lot of developers, what I feel like is there's more security the more developers there are the larger the developer community is. Um, I see a very, very small developer community and that scares me. 
So I'm like sitting there, like just waiting for the day. Cause I already see them being targeted. I see them being targeted by uh, hackers. There's a bunch of them. Uh, like every time there's a, a, a hex, um, a large hex uh, swap or something on Uniswap, there's a little tweet below that. Those little links, they're on every, all of them. Like uh, even with uh, all the hexagons, when they make a tweet post and they say, they, they mention a keyword and then there's a, a automatic bot post that comes right below that. And people, uh, they click on those links. All that information go, goes to the hacker, whatever link they just clicked. And so basically now they're just getting ready to do a little bit more social engineering and they're going to start hacking your shit. So it, it's only a matter of time. I'm just saying like, don't be the target. <laughs> don't be the target. 